Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing the November to be read. What I want to read in November, I have a lot of books that need to be started, semi-started. I have a lot of reading video ideas that involve a lot of these books, like reading vlogs and book talks and all of this stuff, but there's a lot of them. So I'm just gonna go through them, I guess. Let's see. The first book that's on my to be read is Kingsbane by Claire Legrand. I did a book talk, read Furyborn last year, early this year, and I really enjoyed the first book. I need to read this, but it's so long. And I plan to read it this month. Fury Born is about a, a queen from the past and a girl from the present and they kind of are all linked. One brings light and one brings I think destruction and fire and it's all about following their travels and their pathways on curing this world that's kind of gone to chaos. I need to finish it. I don't know how many books are in the series but first one on my list. The next book is Storm and Fury by Jennifer L. Armentrout. I recently read White Hot Kiss and that whole series, which this kind of veers off of because one of the love interests within that is in here and I think is the main love interest in this one. It's kind of all about wardens who are gargoyles and they are kind of fighting against these demons. That was like the White Kiss and their whole plot line. This one, I don't know if it still has like demons, but I do know that gargoyles and the whole world is still in this, but I think it does follow a different girl and the guy love interest from the other book. Love Jennifer L. Armentrout. We'll probably read most of the stuff she puts out. I really just love her romances if I'm gonna be totally honest. This is on my to-do list. The next one I know little about but I saw so many people reading it and loving it in that City of Stairs by Robert Jackson Bennett. I honestly don't know too much about it. I think it's about God to conquer the world and the world that now exists under them. Yeah, I honestly don't really want to know. I feel like if I know more about it, I'll be less inclined to read it because the mystery of it and how it's come on so many people's radar recently is kind of like what's drawing me to read it. I think this will be, I think it's a part of a series. I think like the second one came out or just came out or is coming out. I want to read this. The next book on my list to read is The Diviners by Libba Bray. I've been talking about this book and reading, trying to read this book for so many days now. I did a try a chapter tag recently and this was one of the books that I did a chapter of and I don't think I'm still at that chapter. Yep. I don't know. I was so excited to read this and then I think I lost interest for some weird reason. And I think it's also the length lengths get ya. They do. They really do. But it's all about a girl who has the power to solve murders, I think. And she's gone, come to New York and she's trying to, to catch a serial killer. And I think there's paranormal stuff entwined into it. The first chapter freaked me out because it's all about a Ouija board and a ghost getting free. And I just don't do that. I don't do that. So yeah. The next one I have on my list is something that I may not get to this month. I just got it from the library because it looks beautiful and I've heard about a little bit of it. It's The Beholder by Anna Bright. I believe it's about pirates, maybe. <laughs> That's all I really know about it and it might be a standalone. Uh, it's blurbed by who? The Crowns Game by Evelyn Skye. So I really like The Crowns Game. So I know a little about this. Full of romance and political intrigue. Okay. You got me. I might do another try a chapter tag with some of these and figure out which one I like more. Look how beautiful that cover is. Oh my god. And the next one on my list is Crown of Coral and Pearl. I didn't know about this book um, until I saw it on like my recommends when I like like something else. It looked pretty. I again, you know, I really should start reading books before I pick them up and want to read them and put them out here for you guys. But again, I like the cover and I'm gonna do a try chapter tag with this one because I know virtually nothing about it. It's about a kingdom. Oh, it's about a kingdom in the small island or place is where a lot of the princes get their wives. And there was this one girl who was was chosen to be the wife of a prince. And but then a tragic accident happens and she gets I think a cut on her face and she is deemed unpresentable or something and so they end up choosing her sister to go in her stead to marry the prince and become queen or something like that and it's all about both of the sisters one being left behind and the other going in the other place instead I think it might it might switch perspectives I really don't know or it might just be about one sister the cover is gorgeous and it just I love sister books yeah the next one I am probably the most reluctant to read Daisy Jones and the Sixth. 
I have heard so much mixed reviews, love for it, hate for it, love the book but hate the character. I wasn't planning on reading this until I saw it. I think it's about a band, Ruth Witherspoon, I freaking blurb this, Are you joking? Wasn't gonna read it, it's about a band and I think they're dynamics or something and maybe them breaking up or getting back together, I don't know the whole logistics of it but this is gonna be a very interesting reading vlog when I do read this. The next book has been on my list for so long. It's actually one of my five star predictions and it's Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. It's about a... I don't even know what it's about. Jesus Christ, I'm a cricket. I think it's a love story and magic is involved. I know that much of it and I put it as a five star prediction. How sad is that? But yeah, five star prediction. I'm very curious to see if I actually do think it's five stars because I actually, the more I've been hearing about it, the more people don't like it as much. So it kind of has been scared which means that the romance better throw me through the roof and back for me to give it a five stars if the storyline's not all there at least the romance has to at least be there at least the next one actually came in a recommended list and I read a little bit of it and then just added it to my Goodreads and then I saw it at the library and I was like okay it's the merciful crow by Margaret Owen it's give them fire give them fear amazing. The cover is amazing. That title is amazing. It's been blurbed by Claire Legrand, Emily A. Duncan, but the back is a little blurb. I'll, I'll read it. It wasn't that Faye wanted to burn the world down. No. She just wanted the world to know that she could. Girl. Sounds so good. It's short comparatively to some of my other books. Oh, I think that's a pretty ass map. Look at that. So I got this. Wasn't on my list of wanting to read until I saw it on Goodreads. Here it is. The next one. I saw it thought I was done with this series, but I saw it and thought, content. The Broken Throne by Victoria Aveyard. I've done a book talk for every single Red Queen book. My thoughts are very mixed for the whole series, whole series. And I was like, okay, I'm not reading this. Even though I put it on my want to read and good reads, I was like, I probably will never read this. And then I saw it. Again, I thought content and an interesting reading vlog of my thoughts because if you re if you go and look at my last book talk for the last book in the series now there's another one whatever it wasn't all that positive <laughs> and I had very much lots of words about the ending I didn't like it it gave me no clarity whatsoever and I want some clarity I guess although I could live with not the clarity I guess but I saw it I got it I might read it now the next two I am the most excited about and can't believe that my library actually had them in stock in front of me. I was so... The first one is Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. Boarding schools, dark eeriness, spooky, Halloweeny. It's been blurbed by Stephen King. Like, can't this can do no wrong. Now that it's been out for a couple weeks, I've heard mixed reviews on it, how it's like a slow burn and how you need time to get into it, but I'm ready. I am ready for it. And like the cover, I mean, this this disgusting thing, but like the cover. The next book is also one that's been around booktube a lot and that is The Beautiful by Renee Adier. I have a sentiment towards vampires since Twilight was the book that got me into reading in general. I've read many great vampire books from the world of Twilight. You can say what you want, but that vampire dynamic is a good one, let me tell you. I've read good ones from The Vampire Diaries by LJ Smith and then her Night World series that just expands on the vampire world is also fantastic. So this has very high hopes for the vampire element. I've been hearing reviews that it's about vampires but there's not enough vampires so flag number one. But the cover is beautiful. I'm so glad that vampires are finally coming back. I mean god bless who doesn't want some vampires. I've only read two other books by Renee Adier. It's her duology that she wrote and I did love her writing but also I got kind of got lost in her writing. I do tech sometimes because sometimes I want things to the point and she's very much a beautiful flowing writer so I don't know how it will translate into like something not as beautiful as like The Wrath and the Dawn because that world is so beautiful and this is set in like 1800s New Orleans so it's more gritty so I don't know how that will translate, but I saw such high hopes. Such high hope. I'm so excited. Oh, yeah. If you don't know what it's about, it's about vampires and New Orleans. 
Do you need any more? The next book I have is Red, White, and Royal Blue. This is, sounds like the cutest book in the world. It says, what happens when America's first son falls in love with the Prince of Wales? Like, how could you not want to read it? Again, when I'm in between my weird and fantasy books, because that's mostly what my thing is this month, is fantasy and paranormal, apparently. I'll be picking this up. Um, again, a cheesy romance with queer characters. Like, love it. Love it. And the last book that I can show you, because I have a couple of maybe secret TBRs, even though I hate to say that, but like a book idea that I don't know if I'm going to want to publish, is The Missing of Claire, Claire de Lune by Christelle Dabos. Again, I read A Winter's Promise last month. Absolutely adored it. Um, have I started this book? Why is there a tab? Oh no, it's just a tab. It's about a girl who has powers. She ends up being swept to another land and being put into like this political kind of chaos around the guy she's gonna marry and she kind of has to link through this world the only way she can and kind of start playing the political game. And this is the second book in the series. The last book left off on the part that I was so ready for the part that they were about to get at and then they have to go and stop the book. So super excited to get to this this month. Beautiful world, beautiful relationship. I gave Winter's Promise five out of five stars. I have high hopes for this to be another five out of five stars. And that's it. That is it for my November to be read. A lot of books. Will I get to all of them? Probably not. Will I read some more that weren't on there? Probably. You can't hold me to anything I say in this other than Ninth House and The Beautiful. Those are probably two that I'll really be reading but the rest are up for grabs at this point. I hope you enjoyed this video and like and subscribe if you want more content. I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye guys!